All right, guys, I want to take a minute and talk about chirp sonar. What is the difference between chirp sonar and a regular sonar or a traditional sonar? Well, if you look online, there's all kinds of stuff out there, uh, lots of videos. I posted some myself, and I did one a few years ago that helped a lot of people out, but there was still a little confusion there. So I wanted to do one more super simple, cover everything as quickly as possible with the smallest words possible. Words that I he learned it with not using big unnecessary words to make myself uh, seem smart or something like that. So let's go ahead and start with what we know. We know our single frequency transducers this is what we've been using for years. Typically, you're going to get like a 50 kilohertz and 83 or 200 for regular sport fishing. You know, you may have a combination. Maybe yours does 50 and 200. Maybe it does 83 and 200. Okay, this is what we're used to. You have one cone size, one frequency. Okay. Lower frequency is typically a wider cone, medium is in the middle, and your high frequency is a narrower cone. Narrower cones give you really good detail on the bottom, especially if you're like a wreck fisherman or a bottom fisherman. But with this narrower cone, you're not going to see fish that are around the boat, you know, unless you're very deep where your cone can get wide enough. Low, you know, we're going to mark fish that are around the boat a little better. But to the bottom, you know, big hills and valleys and humps are going to look much flatter, so you lose your bottom detail. And then, you know, medium, you get a little bit of both, okay? Your, your transducer shoots a, a ping down, it hits the target, comes back, tells you where the target is, shows you what it looks like. But it's sending that one frequency over and over and over again in that one cone size, okay? So now let's look at chirp, okay? This is based on a chirp ready transducer. Aramar transducers in particular. This is the uh, the bandwidth or the frequency range for transducers that I've used myself and tested myself. So these will change based on what model you have or brand, right? But let's go ahead and use these for now. So now you're going to have low, medium, or high bandwidths. Instead of having one frequency, you get this range of frequencies, okay? When we say bandwidth, this is what we mean. We mean the all the frequencies available to that transducer. That's your bandwidth. So in a high, your bandwidth is 100 frequencies between 150 and 250. The low bandwidth here is between 42 and 65, and medium is between 95 and 155. This is your bandwidth. So what does that mean? Well, it's sending all these frequencies down simultaneously. Just keep sending all these different frequency pings down instead of just one over and over again. Also, as it goes through the range, it also changes the cone size based on what's available in your transducer. So here in the medium, 24 to 16 degree cone sizes. So as it's shifting through all these or as it's sending all these uh, frequency waves down and pulses or pings, it's uh, shifting through all these different cone sizes. So you're getting multiple cone sizes and multiple frequencies. That's what gives you the fantastic performance of a chirp transducer. Well, what does this mean? What do you mean it has 100 frequencies? You know, what does that, what does that mean? Well, each frequency is slightly different. And this is the part that hung me up. It took me a little while to fully understand it. Basically, in the simplest terms, each frequency is different from each other, okay? It doesn't, you don't need to know what each frequency is doing, more or less. Each frequency is different, therefore each pulse or ping that it's sending down is different from the last. So it's sending 100 frequencies, so that's 100 frequency waves that are going down, 100 pings, each different from the last. This translates to your high resolution, your target separation, your better target detection, better detail on bottom. You know, instead of bait fish blobs now, we're seeing each individual mark. We can run on plane and see fish much easier than we could in the past. It's because of all those frequencies. And the more frequencies, the better, uh, you know, the better the resolution you get and the better performance. So. That's basically it. That's the difference between a chirp transducer and a fixed frequency. There's all these available frequencies. So again, you, know, you can say here medium, you have a choice of 83 kilohertz. With a medium chirp ready transducer, you have 60 frequencies. So that's 60 different pings or pulses going into the water, each different than the last, hitting your target over and over again and giving you that crazy performance. Okay, that's some of the simpler technical jargon on what makes chirp chirp. But what it does is it makes everything work better on my fish monitor. All my sonar looks better. It looks cleaner, faster, clearer. The resolution is fantastic. The target detection, separation, 
The detail on the bottom is fantastic. I can see flounder and fluke on the bottom popping off the bottom now where before couldn't see them at all, at least I couldn't. Guys who are catching salmon that have extremely small air bladders, or in some cases no air bladder at all, guys are now marking these fish, where in the past they just never even tried. It's, uh, it's fantastic. And a lot of these chirp transducers, especially the Airmar ones I've been using, are not very expensive. You probably have a chirp processor built into one of your displays right now. The Simrad Go units are just a few hundred dollars, and they have built-in chirp processors. If you get one of these transducers, you're going to get all you can out of that display. Uh, I mean, that's the business end, man. The transducer is the business end of your machine. If you haven't tried a chirp-ready transducer with these Airmar machines, try one. I absolutely love it. I couldn't possibly see myself going back. Now, technically, you can set a single frequency transducer to chirp. You can go into your menu on your sonar and set a fixed frequency transducer to medium chirp. And what I found is you can get one or two extra frequencies out of your transducer in some cases, but every time I've tested one by setting a single frequency to a chirp setting, I've always got better performance leaving it in a single frequency. So I've talked to some dealers who, you know, they'll say, oh, I'll just set it to chirp and it's the same. It is not the same. It's, it's uh, not even in the same ballpark. I mean, it's not in the same universe. So uh, I wouldn't do that. I would leave it in your fixed frequency the way the transducer is meant to run at. Hope this helps you guys understand chirp a little better. Please stay safe on the water. Leave a few for me. Please subscribe. I love you guys. Mean it. Thanks for watching. All right, we are out here we're checking out some Airmar transducers here. We're uh, comparing a few. This is an inexpensive P66 transducer. It's less than 100 bucks. 5200 kilohertz, and we are setting it to high trick to see what she does. Uh, marking some stuff, and here to the right is an actual chirp dedicated transducer, a real chirp transducer. I think the results are obvious. What a lot of people are doing is they're buying these high expensive top of the line units that have chirp processors built in them. And then the guy at the store tells them that $80 transducer, oh yeah, you can chirp it, no problem, use it with chirp. You can, but you're only gonna get a handful of frequencies out of it. If you want the real spectrum of up to 100 frequencies, you have to use a chirp transducer. P66, this is a traditional single frequency transducer. And I don't think I need to say much more than just show you that. These dashes right there, just ignore them. We're running two transducers right next to each other so we can get an even competition here. That's why they're interfering. But I don't want to put any interference filters on because it'll squash our return or something. What we got here is we set our chirp transducer to high chirp. We got all kinds of good life here. And our P66 is set at 200 kilohertz. I mean, it's got some returns there. Uh, two different worlds though, you know, we got awesome separation. We can kind of count them up if we want to. Um, if you have a single frequency transducer like the 200 slash 50 or 83 slash 200, I would leave them in those single frequencies. That's where they're meant to work. You know, that's where the quality is and they definitely perform their best when you use them the way they're meant to be used. I would use them in single frequency. Setting the chirp doesn't do anything really that I see. Uh, I think it hinders the performance really. You know? This mark here is just above 70 feet, 70 feet and look, there's nothing there. It completely missed that mark. That's probably the best mark in, on the screen right there. Yes sir. You can see our uh, thermocline setting up already. See that? Solid band. Perfect scenario. 200 kilohertz, P66, one, two, three. Look at that stack. That stack. That is a big stack. Now high chirp, we, on this transducer, we have 100 frequencies. And that means target separation or resolution. We can count them babies up where... Yeah. And we are set up here. We are uh, spot locked here, so anchor locked. One of, these th one of my boys here is going to bring one up and show you what they look like in person. Ooh, something's coming up. Or is that your spoon? No, they went and followed it up. Yeah. That was my spoon going mm -hmm. over there. That got his attention right there. He's buttoned up. He's on the old one foot. Oh, 
Oh no. Oh, come back. Oh, <laughs> that was his brother following him. <laughs> there were two chasing that thing. You know it. That's a good fish. He's green as heck, too. <laughs> oh, I'll net it. I'll net it. I'll net it. She's going to take a second. You just you just hooked her here. You missed man. it. Come back and got it. I mean, <laughs> come on. That's a good fish. You don't think it was a second fish? I don't know. Good fish, brother. Thank you. Brutal ambassador drag. Yes. I would get down here and I got about eight transducers. <laughs> Pretty market fish coming up. Yeah, they're coming right up in there. Oh, yeah. Now, mackerel are notoriously difficult to mark. It's on our due to their incredibly small or. Uh, yeah, the very small swim bladder. Or maybe non existent, I forget. Alright, this is what's happened. These guys were jigging here, and I can go back in time and you'll see there was nothing. Nothing, nothing. Tommy's dropping this nine lives cat food here that yeah. joe brought <laughs> and i swear man. nothing nothing people say mackerel are very hard to mark well the school is right here and i swear as soon as that school came oh, up no oh, you got there you go oh, i got a mackerel too though oh wow oh, you oh, I like mackerel. this is the bait we're fun. using mackerel nice size live one These medium ones are yeah, yeah, yeah. i think we got a couple yeah. that is what mackerel looks like oh, oh. There's a perfect example right there what these trip transducers can do. You see the stripers right in there, right inside that ball of bunker. Chowing down.